So again, good day everyone and welcome to this webinar, which today is about confocal microscopy in material science and is presented by Carl Pice Microscopy. My name is Sabine Lenz from Global Marketing and I am here as a moderator of this webinar, in which I am pleased to introduce and welcome Torben Wolf, Product Manager Wide Field Research at Pice Microscopy. Hello Torben. Hello Sabine and hello attendees from this uh, of this webinar. As confocal laser scanning microscopy is a well-established method in life sciences, its benefits for materials research might not be as well known. In our webinar today, Torben Wolf will discuss the benefits of confocal microscopy for materials research. give a short introduction into the confocal principle, show a variety of applications, and finish with a short summary. So before we start um, uh, listening to Torben, I would like to give out some logistical details to you all. Um, remember that this is an interactive webinar, please. You can give us your feedback at any time by clicking the Ask a Question button on your screen. The presentation of Torben will last about 40 minutes and afterwards there will be a short questions and answers session. We encourage everyone to submit a question because even if we cannot answer them today, the presenter will get in touch with you later. The webinar is also being recorded and will be available in a few days time. So now let me hand over to Torben who would like to present you confocal microscopy materials. So, Torben, um, the screen is yours now. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Sabine, for the nice introduction. And also a warm welcome from my side to the webinar. So, my name is Torben Wolf, and during the next 35 to 40 minutes, I will give you an overview of how confocal microscopy can assist you in the material science. So the agenda for that um, um, webinar is, at first I will introduce the, um, introduce the microscope LSM 800 for materials and um, I will give you an overview about the confocal um, principle and I will give a light on different application examples, um, especially in material science and um, I will close the talk with a summary. So, <laughs> okay, now here we are. So, before we talk about confocal microscopy, I would like to introduce the Zeiss portfolio for material science applications. Zeiss microscopy has a unique broad range um, of uh, products, including light, X ray, and electron microscopes so that researchers in different fields can image their samples in multiple modes and across length scale in order to address different scientific questions in samples. So the confocal microscope, LSM 800 for materials, enriches the portfolio with a combination of non-contact surface metrology and the flexibility of an image platform. So, Let's have a closer look to the LSM 800 for materials, your versatile confocal microscope for research and failure analysis. This solution has the leading upright microscope platform, XP Imager, as a basis, combined with an additional confocal laser scanning module, as you can see here on top of this image. This combination offers optical contrast methods like bright field, dark field, polarization contrast, and circular differential interference contrast in transmitted and reflected light for classical microscopy. And the additional confocal laser scanning module, LSM 800, expands the application range with topographic analysis capabilities and non-destructive layer thickness measurements. So this versatile tool gives you answers in many different application fields. So the main application fields are 
yeah, one of the main application fields is um, the, um, to acquire and measure structures um, and topographic features on on your surface. So this image so shows the three D representation of a scratch of a surface. The color scale here on the right side um, indicates the height of the topography. You can use with a laser scanning microscope. Um, um, you can use different contrast techniques like fluorescence to discover more information out of your sample. So the left side here shows the, surf, um, the surface um, in bright field contrast, and the right side shows the surface with fluorescence contrast. And in fluorescence contrast, you can easily detect more information um, out of this composite to see this filaments here on this um, structured um, composite. Another application is the analyzing of the uh, thickness of transparent layer systems with a non-destructive layer um, thickness measurement. Here you see a two-layer system represented in 3D. And you can find 3D information of distribution of cavities, for example, finding um, petroleum deposits with fluorescence confocal scanning in sandstone. Additional to the topography applications, the LSM-800 can be expanded with all the relevant contrast methods, for example, with CDAC. CDSE stands for Circular Differential, Differential Interference Contrast and that is unique for size. This contrast technique uh, gives you a fast and precise impression about the surface structure of your sample. You can use this information um, to locate regions of interest for further topographic investigations. Here you see another typical height map of a structured surface. You can read this height map, map as, follows, uh, as the following. So the height information, um, you can read it out of the scale next to the image. Hills are represented in red, and dales and valleys are displayed in blue. So on the right corner, the, um, this three-dimensional representation of paper shows really nice the microstructure of paper where you can see the um, different filaments of the paper structure. And one main application is um, yeah, to determine surface roughness and um, for that surface roughness standards are available on the market. According to norms, a specific evaluation length is needed to get specific numbers out of these um, um, evaluation uh, roughness standards. In this case, it is 4 mm, but 4 mm is larger than one single microscope um, image field of view. So with stitching different tile images together, we can go next to the required evaluation length uh, with the confocal microscope. Here again, another fluorescence contrast um, shows that you can reveal additional information um, with the help of fluorescence contrast. And further to the topography acquisition, an extensive set of evaluations and studies are available with our software for topographies conform map. So from this overview of possible applications, um, I would like to go a little bit deeper. So the broad range of applications shows that the LSM-800 for materials is a multifunctional tool that combines non-contact surface metrology with the flexibility of an imaging platform. And this combination offers the following benefits. With just one instrument, you get more information from different imaging methods. For different imaging acquisition methods, you do not need to change between several in, um, instruments. This speeds up the time to comprehensive results of your analysis tremendously. And with the modularity of the platform, you are well prepared for quick changing requirements or even not yet known future needs in your lab. So what does get more information mean? So with the LSMM 800, you can gather topographic information of your sample 
and additional information with the help of different contrast methods in just one instrument. There's no need to change between different instruments. You see here on the left side the topography of a geometric roughness standard and on the right, uh, on the right side a polished section of copper in different optical contrast methods. And what does save time mean? So this image here shows the polished section of a battery. To get the whole information with high lateral resolution, this image was made from, from five times three uh, microscope images and stitched together to one image. And this one image that is used for um, further in, um, investigation to see um, the structure um, of the material, what is used in the battery. To get this result, you can automate the microscope and customize the acquisition and evaluation thanks to the open software architecture. architecture. And yeah, with LSM 800 for materials, you can rely on your results. So because you always get the right hardware settings with the automatic component recognition and with uh, guided acquisition workflows, you get reproducible results. So this example again shows uh, the measurement and evaluation um, of a roughness standard. The LSM 800 for materials is a modular imaging, modular imaging platform. Depending on the application, you decide what configuration you need. So there are different setups for the confocal scan head available and various camera types can be used for documentation. To reveal, to reveal the right information out of your sample, a whole set of high quality objectives are present in the size portfolio. Choose the grade of automation with a suitable stage and in addition with a proper objective, the illumination can be set up to your needs. So with LSM 800, you have an, a versatile um, um, module platform um, that can be set up to your needs. And with the modularity of the imaging platform, you are open for future demands since you can expand the microscope according to your needs. So you can even upgrade an existing axial imager, Z2M microscope, with this confocal scanning head, LSM 800 for materials. And you can add different contrast techniques and you can correlate with other microscopes, the so-called shuttle and find. This means you can locate the region of interest of your sample with a light microscope and with the help of the correlative sample holder, you will exactly you will find exact that region of interest again in an electron microscope for further evaluation. So and all, all of this functionality comes along in size quality and is secured by the worldwide service network for a long lifetime of your microscope system. So this information shows the benefit of the system. But how do we gather the, the topographic data from a confocal microscope? That's what you will learn, what you will hear about in the next chapter, the confocal principle. A confocal laser scanning microscope is a system that uses laser light in a confocal beam path to capture defined optical sections of a sample and combine them into a three-dimensional image stack. Here on the right side, you see a schematic um, of the principle. The main feature of a confocal microscope is, an, is the aperture, or usually called pinhole. It is arranged in the way that out-of-focus information will be blocked and only in-focus information can be detected. In this sketch, um, the in-focus information is marked yellow, so the information that comes from the um, focal plane. And the yellow information goes right into through the pinhole into the detector. The out-of-focus information from above or below the focal plane are marked exemplary with the dotted lines in blue and red. And this information is blocked by the confocal pinhole. 
So by scanning an X and Y direction, an image of the surface can be generated for different Z heights, Z heights. In focus information appears bright, out of focus information appears dark. So by changing the distance between the sample and the lens, the sample is optically sectioned, checked, sectioned and an image stack is generated. Inside that image um, stack, um, the analysis of the intensity distribution of a single pixel through the image stack is used to calculate the corresponding, uh, corresponding height. And this height information for every single pixel over the whole field, field of view can be combined to a topographic height map. So this height map can be used for further analysis in our software for topography's conformance. So before we get to some more application examples, here you can see some technical data from the LSM 800 for materials. So with the LSM 800, you can position samples with a height up to 63 millimeter under the microscope. And you have a vertical scanning range in the Z direction um, of up to 25 millimeter. Thanks to the high performance optics, we achieve less lateral resolutions down to 120 nanometer with an amazing pixel count of 37.7 megapixels. So for different applications, especially for fluorescence with uh, synthetic materials, a large variety of illumination possibilities are offered. So the value of these technical data for your application is something I would like to show in the next chapter. Uh, let's talk about specific application examples. What can you do with the confocal microscope um, for materials? For most of the application samples, we use Conformap as a software for topographies. Conformap is the ideal option to visualize and inspect measured in surfaces in 3D, evaluate the quality and functional performance of a surface in according with the latest metrology standards like ISO 25178. So it includes comprehensive geometric, functional, and roughness studies. You can create detailed surface um, analysis report, report. Uh, to expand the application um, range. You can add optional modules for advanced analysis in surface texture, contour measurements, 3D for you uh, for year analysis, and you can add um, a statistic module. All of your evaluation can be re reused for reproducible um, results again and again with the help of a kind of recipes. So the first application example shows the analysis options um, for structured um, surfaces. In this case, for a fluidic for a fluidic channel. So fluidic channels are used, for example, in a lab on a chip to make experiments with only a small amount of reagents and uh, to save waste and shorten the time to result with a high throughput. The geometry of the channel influences the volume and the fluid rate per time. So these dimensions across this profile are measured in the contour along that profile um, in, in the topography. So you can measure the depth, the width, and also the radius of this channel. Additional to the geometric features of the uh, um, fluidic channel, um, the roughness inside the surface channel needs to have a specific value to get the desired and tribological behavior. The profile roughness in the base of the channel is evaluated easily um, according to international standards. The position of the profile uh, can be changed by dragging uh, the profile inside the 3D representation very easily. Here you see uh, the same data set from the slide before, from the slides before, but from the top view. And this fluidic channel um, that has some plateau areas, so this reddish area here on that side. And um, these plateau areas, they, they are used as a ceiling surface. And the flatness for that ceiling surface um, 
um, is important to get the specific functionality. For flatness evaluation, the topography is segmented in Z and filtered to get the waviness information out of the plateau. So specific flatness parameter describes the dimension of the flatness in this area. In this sample, you can identify a so-called crowning of the ceiling surface. You see quite nice the differences between these two images. Here, the Z scale goes from 0 up to 205, uh, 250 micrometers. And with um, the, the segmentation in that direction, we only looked at the yeah, three or four micrometers of the um, top surface to get um, the ceiling surface and the flatness um, of this sample. Another application area is measuring sensitive surfaces. Sensitive surfaces can be damaged when measured with tactile instruments. So non-contact optical methods like confocal laser scanning do not have these in, um, limitations. You can easily imagine by measuring paper or even glass or very sensitive surfaces um, yeah, with a tactile surface um, that will stretch or harm the surface and you will get not the right, um, not the right result out of it. So this application shows a paper surface. You can see the small filaments here of the um, paper, um, of this paper structure. Additional to that, there's a waviness structure on the surface. It is superimposed of this data set. So in this green-yellow arrow area, that shows that is an impact from a dent of a pen when writing on a paper. So how can we measure or what can we, uh, what kind of results could we resolve out of this um, data? So we can filter the surface and with the filter, um, the filter separates the topography data into roughness and into waviness data. To get information of the, for example, of the ink acceptance behavior of this paper, um, we can use the roughness parameter. So they are quite helpful for that. So to find the depth of the dent from the impact from the, um, from, from the pen, um, we can use the waviness parameters to see how deep is the dent on, on this um, on paper surface. This filter method lead us to leads us to the next important applications for confocal laser scanning microscope and that is the roughness measurement to measure roughness um, and evaluate surface roughness with non-contact instruments a set of international standardizations are released now so for example the type of measurement device in the case of the LSM 800 a confocal laser scanning microscope is described in the yeah, so-called ISO 25178-602. And the evaluation software conformant that we use um, uh, for, for these applications supports the latest filtering techniques and a complete set of 3D parameters to describe the surface according to international standards. So this image shows again a geometric standard with a sinusoidal topography. This standard is used to check tactile surface roughness measurements devices like profilometer. So the described geometric standard from the slide before usually comes with a calibration certif certificate. And in this calibration certificate, this certificate, some roughness parameters are stated in there. And the numbers stated in there, they were always measured with a tactile surface profilometer. So to get close to comparable evaluation settings, we need to take care um, of the acquisition and evaluation settings with a confocal microscope. Especially the evaluation length and the right filter settings are important. So at the right side, you see an example of how to meet these requirements with a confocal microscope. Next to surface applications um, with a laser scanning microscope, we can provide solutions in non-contact, non-destructive layer thickness measurement 
what you can see here. So a transparent layer thickness, uh, multi-layer surfaces, um, transparent multi-layer surfaces are measured with a guided workflow. At first, the first step is the acquisition of the Z-Stack. In the so-called author view, um, we can see the intensity uh, distribution along the Z-axis. So in this image, you see in the middle the X and Y intensity information of the image. And in the boxes above and on the right side, um, you see the intensity along the Z-axis. You can imagine, okay, these are the intensity of this three layers that we have on these three surfaces that we have here. In the next step for multi-layer thickness measurement, um, we take one of these boxes here and we make one profile through the, um, yeah, through the intensity and distribution and measure the distance between the intensity of maxima and this result, the distance between the intensity maxima um, is a measure of the thickness of this specific layer. So at the end you can also resp um, um, uh, export, at the end you can export the, the, ex uh, the results to a table or something, um, to a record to um, store the data and your results. Another topographic application is here. In this application, um, I would like you to show um, a possible evaluation strategy for topographic analysis of wear on an, on an electric switch. So this contact surface of that switch suffers with every single um, switch cycle. So material erodes from the surface and also, in addition, um, additional material is built up on the surface, what you can see here with the hills and the valleys. So finding the amount of the eroded and built up material is the question in that application. But how can we measure the real amount of materials on a cylindrical shaped surface like this? To do so, um, the first step is that we subtract the cylindrical form um, from the raw data. We now see the surface here without the cylindrical form. And in a special study, um, in this study it segments the data in three different height sections. And after this segmentation, the build-up material is marked red and the eroded material is marked in blue and the reference plane is green. So the results of the area and the volume of the specific sections are listed in the table and gives you an overview over the material distribution of the eroded and the built-up material of that switch. Another example for wear measurement is this stretch on a glass surface. So the depth and the volume of the scratch are of interest for the user. To get the result, different ways are possible. So you can evaluate the depth and the projected area um, with the help of the profile. You just place the profile into the topography and you can see the profile result here um, in this plot. You can investigate the shape of the wall very well with this profile. But this information is only valid for that specific profile section and you don't know something about the whole volume of that scratch. To get the volume information, you can use a volume study that gives you the whole volume inside a specific area that is described here with the dotted line. Additional, the deepest point of inside the whole um, area of the dotted, dotted, dotted line um, is calculated. In this application, we talk about petrography. That is a branch of petrology and uh, that focuses on a detailed description of rock. So in this area, a light microscope is a well-known tool for the geologist. So most used microscopes by oil and gas customers are upright light microscopes and polarized light microscopes. 
So with polarized light microscope, um, with the help of polarized light microscopes, the geologists identify, identified different minerals in the rock. And for doing this, thin sections of the rock with a polished surface are impregnated with a low viscosity fluorescence epoxy and cut into thickness uh, in thin sections of 20 to 30 microns. And um, these thin sections are imaged with a confocal um, um, laser scanning microscope and you can create out of it 3D and 2D fluorescence images um, that shows the structure of the material very nice. And yeah, once you have this structure out of the material, um, some typical evaluations are finding um, yeah, inclusions, uh, inclusions in a small micron size and quantities of, uh, quantities of liquid and or vapor trapped in impurities within the material and the minerals. So when they are enclosed by minerals, fluid inclusions, which may fluoresce, fluoresce uh, can be observed in a microscope when the minerals are cut into thin sections. Inclusions preserve the chemical and physical properties of the original parent fluids from which they were formed. So understanding the porosity and the permeability of source and reservoir rock play a vital role in the petroleum exploration. These factors can be measured to provide indicators of a fluid flow dynamics, dynamics and migration and the oil storage. The volume space between geological materials can be measured to provide this valuable information. So with this information, the geologist can say, is that yeah, mineral, is it um, good to to mine in that direction or not? Could we find some raw material or not? And that's what you can find out with this thin um, polished sector sections um, and a microscope. So as we saw in that application before from the petrography, additional to topography measurements with the um, laser scanning microscope, we can also image the surface in different contrast methods. So the left side shows a typically bright field image of copper. You can see structures and colors quite nice. So the same surface in dark field contrast is shown on the right side. Cracks, cracks and edges are clearly visible. These contrast techniques can be used to find specific features on the surface that can be further evaluated with a topographic measurement. And some other materials, they have biofringe capability that can be used for characterizing them with polarization contrast. With this contrast method, um, you can find the orientation of crystals or detect fibers and their predominant um, direction, as you can see nicely in this colorful images here. The imaging platform, Axio Imager, what is the basis of the LSM 800, so it has the capability to use all important contrast methods uh, to image the sample. So, for example, this image gallery shows an, an aluminum surface in bright field, dark field, circular differential in interference contrast and polarization contrast. And um, these images were, were done on in the same area. So, for example, in the dark field contrast, you can identify the grain borders very nice and additional in the polarization contrast, you can see the different internal orientation of the grains. So, with just one instrument, you can reveal more information of your sample. So, and that directs me to the summary of that talk. So, we talked about the general benefits of the LSM 800 for materials and explain the confocal principle. With the application examples, we can get an overview about um, the wide solutions we can provide to you with the LSM 800 for materials. To close the talk, let me summarize the information about the confocal microscope.
<laughs> Sorry, that <laughs> was. Uh, small technical problem, but uh, here we are again. So, so please let me summarize the information about the confocal um, yeah, microscope. So, the Zeiss LSM 800 for materials, um, your versatile confocal microscope for research and failure analysis. So. What does it mean? So you get more information per sample since the laser scanning microscope offers non-contact surface metrology combined with a with flexible imaging platform. You save time in acquisition and the sample handling due to the easy and repeatable setup of experiments and measurements. With the LSM 800 for materials, we deliver what you know about your instrument of, of what you know about our instruments. You can trust in your measurement results. And with this versatile tool, you're flexible and you can face various demands due to the modularity of size accessories. You can expand the setup every time according to your needs. So, and this is the yeah, closing slide. And um, yeah, for further information about application and also about um, yeah, the instrument, the LSM 800 for materials, please visit our website under www.zeiss.com slash LSM 800-MMAT. So it was a pleasure for me having the opportunity to talk to you about confocal laser scanning microscopy and material science. I would like to say thank you for your time and for your attention. And now we would like to open the question and answer, uh, answer session. And I hand over again to Sabina. Yeah, Torben, thank you very much. It was a pleasure for me um, listening to you. Um, thank you very much for the excellent presentation. Now we have some minutes left for question and answers. As I already said in the introduction, if you have not already done so, please use the Ask a Question button on your screen to ask something you might like to know. So, Torben, some questions are coming in. Are you ready for us to start? Yes, I'm ready. Okay, good. So, here comes the first question. Is the color-coded scale bar for surface topo topography variation showing the actual variation, or is it just a representative for comparison and better visualization of the variation? It is a little so bit of a long question. Did you did you get it, or should I repeat it? I I, I, I get it. I get it. So what you see on that Excellent. typical typical three um, D representation is the surface texture or the surface structure itself. So um, this is the, the, the total amount of, of height um, of the surface. So uh, um, when I switch back to one of the slides, um, for example, this slide, what you see here. Um, ah, OK, this slide, what you see here. This is the, um, yeah, is the exact height of the surface. That means this is the top and that is the depth. So we do not do any comparison, as you may know from um, CID, uh, from a CAT um, um, yeah, comparison, so that you have an actual and the measured surface and that you superimpose this um, surface. And you get, as a color-coded information, um, the deviation out of it. So what we are doing with a confocal microscope is we um, we measure the surface um, structure and represent the real height of it. That is described by the height map or by the by the color scale on the right side. Okay. Thank you very much, Torben. Now, here we have another question. Does the 
LSM for material uses the use the error scan detector. Is it possible to upgrade an axial observer with LSM for materials? Two questions in one, I would say. Yeah, okay. The first question, if you can upgrade um, with an ARI scan detector. So um, the ARI scan detector, this is a high sensitive new detection method um, that is mostly used in the biomedical and uh, yeah, bioscience area um, where you want to get um, yeah, want to, to, to um, get signals from from even very weak, um, um, yeah, from 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 very weak light sources or, or signals, and um, you can detect it with an ARI scan and as a in, a in a high resolution. Theoretically, you can you can upgrade the LSM 800 for materials um, with an ARI scan detector, but um, the application in the materials world. Um, and that is something, yeah. Maybe we can we can imagine like thin structures. Maybe that could be. But for the applications, what what you saw today in the webinar, um, the Aries scan module um, would not be would not have the benefit as it has in the bioscience application. The second part of the question: um, Could we combine? The LSM 800 scanning head with an um, Axio observer. The Axio observer is an um, upright microscope that is um, that can also be used for um, imaging. Um, so this configuration with an um, Axio observer is not the um, is not the standard um, yeah the standard configuration. So with a so-called yeah, customized solution, um, we could offer this kind of configuration, but um, that is something we, yeah, we need to discuss um, yeah, in, in more in detail. Okay, thank you very much so far for this question. Now, Torben, I have two questions actually that um, um, are asked with respect to layer measurements. So the yes. first one would be for layer measurements, how transparent sorry. How transparent does the layer need to be? Should I repeat it? Sorry, I was yeah, for um, layer measurements how, how how transparent does the layer need to be? Um, so, so could, could you repeat it again? I'm sorry, I didn't get it. How tra oh, the, the, the transparency of how transparent? The, the yeah, yeah, the transparency. Ah. How transparent? Okay, okay. How transparent does the layer need to be? Okay, thank you, thank you. Um, <laughs> um, that, is, that is something. That is something I could not um, could not state in any um, yeah, specific numbers. It depends. It depends on the material, and um, and it also depends on the um, laser light source that you use for imaging in the um, uh, for this confocal imaging. So and also the transparency um, of um, yeah, of the material that you use. So in general, we use here um, a laser light source with a wavelength about four or five nanometer. And as long um, yeah, the material you want to to want to see is transparent or kind of transparent for that um, wavelength, uh, we can measure the um, um, the layer thickness. All right, thank you, Joe Torben. Now here is one more. It also mm -hmm. refers to multi-layer analysis. The question is for multi-layer analysis. What is the intensity maximum? Is it between the, do, the two adjacent layers? So in the intensity maximum, what I, what I was talking about is um, between the, 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 the layer from one medium um, into the another medium. For example, when you have a, um, a transparent plastic coating and um, and you have a substrate, so the first layer, or the, 
first intensity maximum come, comes from the um, surface between um, the substrate and the transparent layer. And then you will get a second um, intensity um, from the surface from the transparent layer to the um, yeah to the air where you where you measure um, the surface and these two signals that is something what we see in the intensity distribution along the z-axis and that is what we are um, determine with the layer thickness measurement functionality. Okay, thank you very much, David. I have another question for you. Yeah. Does the software generate any data on porosity? Mm, that depends on how the porosity um, yeah, is structured. So we also we, 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 we measured some, some foam, for example. And this is a very porous um, yeah, structure of the surface structure. And with the reflected light, uh, with reflected light um, measurement, um, confocal measurement, we can only get information from, uh, from, from, from the surface that is reflected from the sample back into the objective. So when you have a very porous or a, a, a very structured surface, a real 3D surface, um, you will only get information from the first uh, um, reflective surface that you have in this um, porous, um, porous material. Depending on the material, you can also use um, fluorescence confocal imaging so that you um, yeah, look at the surface with a laser or that you uh, treat the surface with a laser and um, the surface sometimes it fluoresces in, in, a, in a certain way and you detect the, the signal of, of that fluorescence and uh, measure um, also a z-stack of this fluorescence porous uh, material and then you get, yeah, then you get some yeah, data, some 3D data out of it. And um, yeah, to evaluate the porosity, um, that is something yeah, you can you can find some studies at the software about Conformat, about the distribution of poles and distribution of material that's still there to get information about the porosity. Now, I have another question for you, Torben. It deals with calibration standards. The question is, is there any calibration required specific to standards? Is it certified and what is the accuracy? So there is a possibility to, to measure um, yeah, calibrated um, roughness standards with the help of the LSM 800 for materials, and you can evaluate the numbers that are comes that that comes out of um, out of it, and um, you can in this case you can prove the capability of your um, the capability of your instrument, and um, for my knowledge, it is um, okay a specific you know, this specific roughness standards that are available on the market and that I also showed in my presentation, they are specific for um, yeah, tactile profilometers. And um, yeah, to, you, can, you can measure this, yeah, you, can, you can measure the surface um, topography, topography of that roughness standard to, to see if the laser scanning microscope um, yeah, is still measuring in in the right way. Okay, thank you very much. Um, let me check. 
um, there was one question I was looking at um, that said, um, do you have a solution for samples that are bigger than 60 millimeters? So in this case, um, yeah, we need to talk um, yeah, separately about a possible solution. So theoretically, um, yeah, there might be a solution to do so, um, but in the yeah the standard microscope um, yeah range um, that we that we offer in addition with this LSM 800. Um, yeah, is with the basis of this axial imager and the, the technical specifications regarding the sample size of the axial imager. But with a customized solution, um, we could introduce a customized solution. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, there we go. There is another question for you, Thomas. What about measuring liquids with with a confocal microscope? So this is this is theoretically possible to measure the liquids and uh, to measure maybe some yeah measure liquids like like glue or something like that and to see the structure and or even 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 water and um, so due to the fact that it's a, a non-contact measurement on um, the laser scanning microscope is a preferred solution for that kind of application okay thanks a lot now I have another question for you that um, it's um, posed with respect to illumination methods. So which illumination method, incident or transmission, is better to image the petrographic thin section for pore size distribution? So normally for this petrographic um, um, yeah, investigation, um, they use um, yeah, transmitted light um, to get the information from this thin, um, thin cutted um, surface structure um, to get yeah the confocal 3D information and the distribution of the porosity of, for example, sandstone. So it is it is um, yeah transmitted light. So that we shine through the surface to get um, you know, the information. Okay, thank you very much, Torben. Now I have another question for you that um, refers to the different lasers. So why does the LSM use different lasers? What are the different laser colors used for? So the standard laser line, what we have, um, this is about four or five nanometer, that's the wavelength, um, it's an ultraviolet laser wavelength, and um, with the help of this wavelength, um, we can solve most of the, um, yeah, most of the applications in reflective, uh, reflected light. So when we go to confocal imaging, laser confocal imaging with, <coughs> I'm sorry, laser confocal imaging um, um, that we want to fluorescence laser confocal Im imaging. We want to um, illuminate yeah, the surface with a laser and um, this surface that um, yeah, illum illuminates with another wavelength back. So, um, and um, yeah, this wavelength or this excitation of the wavelength that is something um, we want to, to see in, a, in this confocal microscope. And um, different materials, they have different behaviors in the fluorescence. And um, for these different um, materials, we, we can use up to four different lasers. So we have um, an ultraviolet laser with a four or five nanometer, um, um, a red one, a green one and a blue um, blue one that um, can be used for 
um, illum laser illumination. Okay, thank you very much. Now, let me see. Oh, I have discovered a question that is um, so easy that even I can answer it. The question is, will this webinar be emailed out to everyone? And the answer is yes, it will. <laughs> <laughs> so, Torben, <laughs> you don't need to answer this question because this was very easy. Okay. Um, <laughs> now we are nearly running out of time. It's two minutes before six o'clock in Germany, at least. So, I would, I would last, uh, um, uh, Torben, I would uh, pose you the very final question of this session. What are the steep flanks that can be measured with the confocal microscope? So the steepest flanks um, of surface structures um, that depends on the objective that you use. And this uh, has something to do with the numerical aperture of the objective. And um, yeah, the higher the magnification and the better the quality of the lens, the higher the numerical aperture is. And um, so there, there is a uh, formula to um, yeah, to do yeah, the mathematics to, to find out the yeah, the angle of the steepest flanks to get signals uh, out of the steepest um, flanks um, to do it theoretically. But in theory, um, this is valid for high reflective surfaces. And um, yeah, actually, it is that um, on steep flanks that have a rough surface. Um, we will also get some signals um, out of these flanks to, um, that we can evaluate in the topography and we, we can uh, reconstruct the topography um, out of this um, information. So the exact numbers um, that can be yeah, determined mathematically but practically um, yeah, it depends on the surface structure that we want to measure. All right. Now I would like, first of all, to thank Torben for his great presentation. I would like to thank um, everybody in the audience for giving us the opportunity to have a very vivid discussion. I, I enjoyed it very much. I hope you did too. Um, as I said in the introduction, um, if anybody's question remained unanswered, we will get back to you in written form. And uh, as I said before, the recording will be available and will be mailed out to you um, soon. Now, I have, um, I have the pleasure to um, wish you a very good day today. I hope everybody enjoyed this. And uh, yeah, I would like to thank Torben again for this um, excellent presentation. Um, please enjoy the rest of your day and goodbye to everybody. <laughs>